So since my last tutorials on building an Azure DevOps pipeline for your SPA app, there's been some changes to app service. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to update your Windows app service and also how to actually deploy a Linux app service. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to be creating a Windows and Linux app service from scratch. So let's go here, uh, resource group. If you already have one, make sure that you have all of your Windows um, resource groups together and all of your uh, Linux resource groups together because you won't be able to cross them. So I'm just going to name them just so I know which um, environment. And I'm also going to call this just win app, give it some random characters, choose windows. So the new thing you'll realize is uh, runtime stack. And what you'll want to do is basically for both the Linux and Windows environment, you're wanting to choose a runtime server that's going to support an index HTML file. So in our case, we're going to run off ASP.NET or .NET Core because that will be running off IIS and IIS will automatically detect index HTML files, which will then serve up your SPA framework. So then I'm going to choose Canada Central. And then we're going to choose an app service plan. So I'm just going to call this win uh, window app service plan just to things nice and organized. And I'm just going to choose the free one for now. Apply and maybe monitor. I'm going to say no to the um, application insight. Tag is fine and should be able to create now. Okay, now that that's done, let's go add our Linux app. Same thing, we go create our Linux resource group. Linux resource group. And once again, optional if you already have one, Linux app, give it some random characters. Choose Linux for my runtime or for my operating system. And then my runtime stack, I'm going to choose all these options are available to you, but you actually cannot run ASP.NET on the Linux stack. I think this will probably get updated as they continue to update app service. So what you want to do, same idea, you want to basically run something that can run an index HTML. And in this case, for the Linux world, you want to choose PHP or Ruby. And if you do want to get a little bit more complex yourself, you could choose Node JS and have a index.js file that will serve your index HTML, but that's a little extra step and you'll have to configure your Node.js. And also if you do choose Node.js, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So you might want to follow a Microsoft tutorial because it's not just a click and serve like these ones will be. And you will be able to reconfigure this later. So you don't have to worry too much about choosing one. Same thing, Canada Central for my location. And then I'm going to create a Linux app service plan. Change this to my free tier again. Apply and create. Perfect. And while that's creating, I'm going to go back to the other app service here. So just so you can see how this is configured, since they did change the UI of it. So you would click on your app service, you would click configure here. And then once configure loads, there is a general setting that you can choose to kind of change your runtime stack. Okay, so click here and then this one right here. So I believe .NET Core is supported in Windows as of right now, um, but it will be blank because once you choose .NET, you can see the .NET framework version will not be actually supported. So you want to make sure you discard that. So I'm not sure if you do update it, if you'll be able to run .NET Core, but when you create the app, you will be able to run it. The same idea when you have your Linux deployed, um, you go here, you choose your stack, and then you can update that accordingly. Okay, so my finished deploying, I'm just gonna give this a quick refresh just so we can see it. Go back to home. And there's my Linux app. So you'll see the Linux one has a few more configurations since the um, runtime stacks are a bit different. You can see it's on PHP right now, and these are the different ones that you'll be able to run. And you'll notice that the .NET framework itself is not available here. So I believe that's a bug that they'll resolve by the time, hopefully a few months from now. But in the meantime, just keep that in mind that the stacks actually do not match what is available in each environment. So now we have all that running, let's go back to our pipelines and actually update them. So if you follow my previous tutorials, the build you will not have to change, which is a good part. Only the release you'll have to change, which is very minor. So I'll just show you with my React one, but all of the other ones are very similar. We click this, go here, 
And then um, right now I have it on Windows. So oh, also if yours is grayed out, um, it might be linked. So there's a little button you can click to unlink it. Um, and then this, it will unlock your configurability here. If not, then just configure it in the other places. So what you want to do is choose the, I have a Windows app right here. And you're, you don't have to configure anything. It will work because we configured it on the app service side of things. So you click save. And then I'm just going to uh, click production. So it's going to build my React app. And I'm going to click release. Follow the release. And deploy this. So right now I'm deploying on Windows, so I'm going to go to the app service. I'm going to open the Windows, and I'm just going to go to the URL while that's building. So let's open this, and it should say that there's no app available. All right. So as this builds um, and releases, we're just going to give that a quick refresh just to make sure it works, and then we'll follow the Linux uh, link as well. So we'll just preemptively open the Linux link while that's building, and then have this up and running. And this will be the same page. Perfect. So first one's Linux, or first one's Windows, and second one is Linux. Let's go back to here, and we'll refresh the page once it's done. All right, so my Windows 1 is done building. We're going to go here, give this a quick refresh, and we should see the React app. Perfect. So let's go and build and configure this for Linux now. So there's a little bit more steps you have to do, and that's we already kind of covered. So go back here, you click your task. We're going to change this from web app on Windows to web app on Linux. Then we're going to click our Linux app. And then you'll see here the runtime stack. So you'll have to do the same thing. Choose your runtime stack. And like I said, you can use Ruby or you can use PHP. Uh, PHP 7.3. Okay. And then you don't need to enter a startup command. So if you do choose to go about the Node.js path to set up your spa framework, make sure that you um, name your Node.js file index.js, and then you don't have to fill anything here. If you name it server.js, you'll have to put node server.js just to keep that in mind. So there's a little bit more configuration. That's why this way is much simpler. So let's click Save. We're going to be running it on PHP. And then we will create the release. Same idea, click release, follow it through, make sure we hit deploy or else you're just going to be sitting there waiting. All right, and I'll continue the video after it's done. So that's done building. Let's go to the Linux app and we'll give this a quick refresh. And there we go. We have our Linux app running. Um, and just do a sanity check. I'm just going to very quickly go to do the view app, edit the view app, do the same thing. Just to show you guys that it works exactly the same. And I will show you actually running on Ruby as well. So choose this one. Um, instead of Python, I'm going to now choose Ruby. And don't have to enter anything in the startup command. Uh, click Save. Create release. Oops. Uh, staging. Create. Uh, release 9, deploy, and as soon as this is done, I will refresh the Linux app. All right, so my view app has finished deploying. Let's go here, refresh this, and now it's on a view app. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this update video helped you guys out. I know app service is constantly moving, constantly changing. So with a lot of the cloud technology stuff, they're always updating, they're always changing. If this helped you out, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more future videos. Comment below if there are more breaking changes that I need to update on. But in the meantime, I'm back from holidays and I have a bunch of videos that I have scheduled out. I am in the recording process. So the next videos are going to be about Azure Search, a top five, top 10 guide to working in a team with developers. And eventually, as soon as ASP.NET Core 3.0 comes out, I will create a full length tutorial series on using ASP.NET Core 3.0.